Oh man. This is it. Oh damn. I have been waiting so long for a second part of this game and now it is here. What up everyone, it's Kirtan Singh and today I am talking about The Last of Us Part 2. So I've played this game, I've loved the first one, if you've been watching my vlogs you would know that and there are actually a lot of reactions while I'm playing the game in my vlogs so if you haven't checked that out yet, my July vlog, you should go watch that. But otherwise today I'm going to be talking about The Last of Us Part 2, I've loved the first game, it meant so much to me when I played it. Uh, I remember when I when I finished playing it, I actually saw PewDiePie play it and then I eventually got the game, played it and I had my, in, in the theatre room where I am now, I took my phone out and I was recording my reaction to the ending. Uh, even though I've seen it before and like everything, I was recording it, even my sister knows. I don't have footage of it because uh, I lost footage of everything from 2013 and before. All my videos and photos, I can't remember why, I probably just accidentally formatted in my hard drive I had it on but yeah regardless we are talking about the game the part two and you can probably tell I, I it wasn't great when I finished watching The Last Jedi in cinemas you know I was disappointed by it. it's one of the few movies I've actually come out of a cinema disappointed by uh, but I was like you know there's the Rise of Skywalker came out of the Rise of Skywalker disappointed but I was like The Last Jedi disappointed me first I should have had less expect I didn't have too high expectations. With this game, I didn't, like, you know when this game, like the first one came out and was a success and everything, I knew that there was gonna be a sequel, no doubt about it, but I trusted the Naughty Dog to actually make a really good sequel. Um, this is the first time I've actually had a CD or DVD of anything that I'm actually tempted to do one of those reaction videos where you actually destroy the disc. That's, that's how much this game ticked me off. I was actually, I, I, one of the big things that's just stopping me is the fact that I love the first one, and the other thing is I paid 70 bucks for this, so I'm not gonna just destroy it. But I was really tempted to while playing this game. I was like, I just wanna burn this disc. Just let it out, because it, it, it's so bad. I never wanted to do that with The Last Jedi, The Rise of Skywalker, nothing else that I've ever really loved. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the what many people say is like the SJW agenda and everything, because look, that's just not something I'm going to tackle here right now. Uh, I will touch on a few topics some people may find sensitive. Um, if you do find sensitive, I'm not trying to attack you or anything. I'm just stating my opinion of the game itself and let's just get to it and i love the discussion i love like when people say like oh man she should have killed abby and, like no then you're a fucking psychopath if you think that <laughs> yeah. like if you think like abby should have died and ellie should have died and they're all going at it and it's like yes that's that's what we struggle with that's that's the, the dilemma of like they're all right and they're all wrong so i've got notes on my phone to help just keep track of everything so i know what i'm gonna say because i will forget a lot as much as i you know, want to talk about this game, a part of me also just wants to forget about it. After playing this game, so I put 30 hours into this game um, to finish it. I played it on like the normal difficulty, whatever it was. Um, did that, um, played it over a week or so. The day I finished it, like m my family, they could tell something was up. What it was, so my, my family could tell something was up. They were like, the day I finished this game, I was out, I went to bed early. Or the, like that was like a few days, over the past few days, I have been going to bed early. It's weird, I just can't be, it's like, it just takes a lot out of you. It's like, it's it's in a weird sense. It's so hard to describe. I don't know how, I really don't know how to describe it. But it's it's weird. Like this game, it's like, it's like it's trying to be real. I feel like I've experienced this before where some sort of medium thinks it's being really, oh, so amazing and so great. When it's just, um, and it's being dark and that's how it's like, oh, it's really real and like really, you know, amazing. But it's just dark and gloomy and just depressing. And that's what this game is, honestly. I'm gonna go through a bunch of stuff now, but like a whole thing of notes. Buckle up, because this is gonna go on for a while. This video is gonna be a long video, and I'm gonna like repeat a few things here and there. But first things first, I was excited for this game. I did not know anything about the leaks, anything about the story. I avoided all of that, and to make sure I did as well, I didn't watch any of the press conferences or anything. I went into this game blind, okay? 
I heard people didn't like it, but then I heard that was because of like SJW agendas and stuff like that. I didn't know specifically what it was. So people finding out about uh, the death that happens at the start two hours into the game and people getting angry about that. I didn't know about that. When it happened to me, I, I wasn't shocked by it, I'll say that. But at the same, because he kind of expected if it's gonna be like, look at the, look at this, like, you know whose story it is, you know? It didn't surprise me that it wasn't really shocking and it wasn't really depressing either because you play as the character that kills him. So it's, why would I, you know, it feels so conflicting. It's like, I just played as Abby, not like five minutes ago, I just played as Abby, you know, and I was like doing this whole horde scene and stuff. And then now you make him the character I played as kill him and I, I just don't get why. What's what's the point of it? Why at first I was like, okay, maybe they just really wanted to have the horde scene and you know, while I'm on that fact, Abby gets pretty much all of the best set pieces. They get the Rat King, the skyscraper, the horde, and like it's uh, I feel like that's the only reason why. They're like, we have all these great ideas, we can't do it with Ellie. Let's just put him with Abby, you know? Or maybe they thought, we have all these great ideas, let's put him with Abby so that way when the cat player plays these great ideas, these great set pieces, they'll think, wow, this is fun, this is great, and they'll associate that with Abby. I don't know what they were thinking, who knows? Abby tortured and killed someone, that's horrible, that's horrific. But everything that Ellie is doing to bring people to justice, Ellie killed a pregnant woman, that's hor more, more horrific in some ways. And yes, there's also the whole thing about Abby being really bulky and well-built. It's a bit much, in my opinion. When I was playing it, like, when she's wearing clothes and all this stuff, like, she's big. But it's not like, well, all these defined muscles and stuff, and it's not, it doesn't feel like it's too much. Well, I could know she could be wearing a lot of layers, but she could still be muscly and strong. But then when she's, like, wearing the singlet, and at times her arms are huge, and I mean, like, huge, like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson huge. And though, like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, like, okay, that's a bit much, like, size-wise of the arms and all this kind of stuff. And, like, the mountain from Game of Thrones and stuff, it's like, you know, calm down a little. And I'm not saying, you know, women can't be strong and muscly, they can, but it just feels like an over-exaggeration of it. And I feel like they did that... I, I don't really know why they did that. Maybe they did it just to make it look believable that she can beat up thousands of people. Or, I don't know, maybe it, it's, I've, yeah, it's a source, like she put all of her anger into becoming better and better, more powerful, more powerful, while she was trying to take vengeance against Joel. It's, yeah, I get why, it's a bit much. Problem is, the gameplay director did such a good job letting us have fun yes, murdering having, everybody! Snapping necks, like, yeah, stabbing people, well, it's like, oh, this is what, so what much fun. What am I supposed to do? Let the pregnant lady fucking stab me yeah. with a knife because she's fucking pregnant? No one told her to go out there. Yeah, oh, I, like, Joe, I, 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 I lost it. I blocked I it out. It's so fucking stupid. Neil uh, Druckmann's writing that he wants this pregnant lady on the front lines of combat slamming her baby against cages. While we're talking about Abby, this is weird. This is, like, we, you see whose story this is meant to be, whose story it should be, and I'm not even talking about her yet. <laughs> so Abby, I put here she's unlikable. She's willing to kill a pregnant lady. Like, Ellie unwillingly didn't know she killed one. But then Abby, she gets told, oh, Dina's pregnant, good. What, am I supposed to root for this character? And I don't care about her friends either. Mel, she's pregnant. Okay, great, I don't give a damn. <laughs> Owen, he's a, you know, oh, he sees everyone as human. He's the nice guy, great. He also cheats on his, like, his girlfriend, wife, whatever, his pregnant partner. And I can't, I might be a little wrong here, but I'm pretty sure they did so after talking about torture and possibly Joel. So it's a little weird. Anyway, uh, it was you know, just this, it was just weird to see. It's like uh, you know, an outlet for them, but torture for me. Anyway, uh, you have Manny, who's charming, he's fun. He also spits on Joel's body. So it's like, what? You really want me to root for this guy? He gets shot by Tommy, which is so good to see. Your inability to fight back makes you quickly resent your opponent, motivating you to defeat them. Every time he hurts you, you get angrier. But then you get to him and... It's Tommy, Joel's brother, one of Ellie's friends and the character that you probably like. It's incredible emotional whiplash. Tora? I think that's one of the other names. Uh, she's the one at the hospital... Chasey? I don't remember the other names. Like, the one at the hospital... Great. Um, the one that got tortured by Tommy, 
great. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Speaking of Tommy, real quick, I'm gonna touch on this. When we get to the sniper part at the marina, and um, like I've seen people say in the videos and stuff where they're like, oh, this is so great because you got the sniper pushing down on you, and you're just gonna have that drive forward. It doesn't matter who that is, you're gonna drive forward, you're gonna wanna kill him, and then bam, you find out who it is, Tommy. Guess what? I knew who it was the moment I got there. I was like, oh, this is just like that sniper scene back in the first game. And then I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, I know where we are. I know who's shooting at me. And then they'd shoot the cars. And like, oh, yeah, it's definitely them now. I definitely know that. I'm like, I don't want to go there. I, don't wanna... I know what happens. I know that he escapes. I know he gets saved by Jesse. So why I'm pushing forward. I know what's going to happen. Shoots Manny. Cool, good on you, Tommy. I still beat him and he falls in the water, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't feel the urgency to go and get the sniper because I really don't give a shit. The problem is they couldn't execute the two sides of the coin, Abby and Ellie, in, an, in a fair, in a meaningful way. They give, you know, Abby everything. Uh, yeah. All the agency, all the yeah, they did. attention. So this whole time as being Abby, whole time Abby's in this game, I just don't give a damn. The, the idea, the idea of, you know, this character could have been great. It could have been good. It's just the way you do it. Why would you have Joel die at the start and have you play as Abby slightly before fighting Joel? Because that just takes away from the impact of Joel's death. And then have us play Abby for 15 hours of the game. It, it's just, it's stupid because you've already made me hate the character. It's really hard to redeem them. And in the fact that, like I've just said, none of the supporting characters are entertaining or fun in any way. I don't really think they're much of a character as they are just there. You know, she's willingly killing a pregnant woman. Um, she also shoots Jesse just outright, a character the game also tried building up a relationship with. He's a fine character. Him and Dina are probably the best new characters. Um, he's nothing. I'm not too attached to him. Like it would have been with Sam and Henry or Tess in the first game. She beats up Ellie. Why the hell would you go? I'm, I'm, I'm going all around the place, so forgive me guys. But why would you build up to this whole scene at the theater with Ellie and Abby in the showdown and then you come back to it as Abby? It's a huge break. It's, it kills the suspense and everything, kills the tension. It's a soft reset. Because when, when I got to that point I started playing as Abby, I'm like, oh, now I got none of these abilities. I got these basic guns and I got all these things. And it just felt like a huge soft reset. And I, the game kind of tries to get you back up and running as quickly as possible by giving you a lot of supplements, a lot of uh, whatever uh, gears to, you know, change the gear, whatever. It still felt like, oh, now I'm just starting again. When I get back to the theater, I beat up Ellie. It's, it's the stupidest thing ever. Not only did I play 15 hours as this character, you know, I played a whole game with that other character, you know. I've, been, I've played that game 12 times. I've never said otherwise. I've played that first game so many times. That's a lot of hours to put into it. Not denying the videos I've seen with it, the playthroughs I've seen, everything with that game. I put a lot of hours into it. I always tell people, I was like, motherfuckers, nobody loves this character more than me, except for maybe Troy Baker. <laughs> <laughs> I care too much about these characters. And you know, Neil Drunk, when you say, nobody loves these characters more than you. Sure, you created them with obviously other people, but they're kind of like your uh, babies in a sense. Doesn't mean I can't love them as well. You know, I put so many hours into this. This game is my favorite game of the all time. It was there when I was like a kid. I played it, it's got that other emotional connection there. It's just... Yeah, so that fighting as fighting as Ellie, I didn't want to do that when I was chasing after her. And then when you get to the scene where like I mean pushes through the door to, and then um, Ellie comes at her with her gun and just tries to hit her. Just a few minutes ago, we saw Jesse come through the door. Abby straight up, bam, shoots him dead. Why doesn't Ellie just do that? Because Abby, the way Abby opens the door, she has both hands on the door and she just walks straight through. She's not like one gun looking around or anything. She's not prepared or anything. Ellie comes from the side. All Ellie has to do, take a note from Abby, shoot her in the legs, and then you can torture her. You know, like someone else that happened to earlier in the game. Like you've already shown that's a possibility. Like I always question that. The amount of times you go through a door and you just don't get shot. But then it happens to Jesse a few minutes ago. Why didn't Ellie just do it to Abby? I don't know. And I can imagine the only reason like, Abby wins that fight is because Abby's clearly more powerful than Ellie. She's gonna dominate, she's gonna win. 
unless Ellie, you know, comes out of nowhere and surprises Abby, which could have happened. Uh, it didn't happen and that's what she got. So that's why I believe we actually had to have a fight again later at the end of the game because and you had to have Abby go through that because you have to have Abby get weaker physically so Ellie actually stands a chance in the fight. But anyway, um, back to what I was saying about the theater fight, it was really terrible. I thought, okay, I'm surely I was supposed to lose this Abby and then, you know, Ellie's gonna play as a cutscene or something. I don't know, maybe I'll switch to Ellie then. Who knows? Um, that didn't happen. You end up winning. It's stupid. Um, but I'm gonna quickly touch on this because while I was talking about Joel and how he just stood in the middle, a lot of people have brought up the fact that Joel, uh, you know, he shouldn't be like this. It's been four years and a lot of people say he's changed in four years. A lot of people also say in the last game he just ran over a guy. He didn't want to give up his name to Henry and Sam and everything. In the beginning of Last of Us Part Two, I mean, after the opening guitar scene, it's like that's four years of having lived in this community that's safe. Four years of like, they meet people on the outside all the time and they bring them in. We have all these notes and stuff that um, they trust them. I want to just address that criticism because I've seen a lot of like, how come Joel and Tommy trust these people? And it's like, it's not an ambush. They're not walking into an ambush. And actually, Troy and I had a lot of conversations about how do they size them up? And they actually, they, they don't want to stay there. They want to lead them back to Jackson because Jackson is, is safe. Yeah. Uh, and actually what Joel is doing there is like, he's sizing everybody up except for Abby because he believes that this girl that he just saved that's the same age as Ellie is safe. It's not, that's not, that wouldn't be the threat. But Joel stupidly just stands in the middle of a room. It's like, okay, sure, he's nicer to people. If you want to believe that, why would he just stand in the middle of a room? <laughs> it's like, what? Um, anyway, and I can understand that in four years he would have changed, but the same reason why you make us play as Abby so we can sympathize with her, so we can know what her character is like and go through the change she's going through, because just hearing about it is one thing, seeing it is another, but being it and playing it is another thing. The same way, you don't tell us Joel has changed, you don't show us Joel has changed, you don't let us play as Joel has changed, you make us assume that within four years he's changed. Even in the flashbacks, Joel's number one priority is Ellie, you know? We don't see him be so sympathetic to those people that ran away trying to help people. His main focus is, Ellie, no, you were there, I saved you, there was no cure. That's still his main focus. He doesn't, we don't see him go out of his way and slowly chip down his barrier so he becomes nice and lets people in and stands in the middle of a room of strangers he just met. It's bad. So I can understand the intent and I can buy that within four years something would have changed, but it's a video game, remember? It's a video game. So you, you can't say the story is good, the ideas portrayed are good and all this kind of stuff, but then it's a video game. You gotta always keep into consideration the play. In fact, you can't say, oh, but you get to play as Abby and that makes you feel more sympathetic to her. The same way, I think it was just right or someone said the thing about the sniper that I talked about earlier. You're playing as him, you're pushing forward. You gotta take into that into consideration in all aspects of the game. Because if this was a book, I can imagine, and you like, you put the chapter so it's Ellie's chapter, then um, Abby's chapter, Ellie's chapter, Abby's chapter. I feel like this could have been really good if you just rearrange it. Heck, if you rearrange it no matter what, gave us an extra game as well to put in between these two to help chip Joel down, this could have been great. You hear a lot that the theme of the game is a cycle of violence, revenge, fear, that kind of stuff, hate, compared to the first game which was love and whatnot. Um, but then the thing is, at the end of the game, Ellie realizes that, you know, she she can find inner peace and like the way she's gonna forgive Joel, she should um, forgive Abby, she should uh, break that cycle because she knows that this like, Lev could come after her and he could try kill her and then the whole cycle could continue and then she needs to break it, she needs to move on um, and in that moment of she gets that clarity. It's, you leave a whole blood trail, you kill so many people. This is where the part of playing the game actually comes in. Playing the game, like there are a lot of moments in this game where you can skip through the areas and like you can tell because when you go through a door, if you quickly go through a door and just, like try to barricade it, you know you could skip through that area. It'd be a little difficult but you can do it. But then there are also a lot of moments where you straight out kill people, where you torture the one at the hospital, and you're just leaving all these, this whole blood trail. And it's like, what are the chances that the wolves or the Seraphites aren't gonna be like, that girl, she messed everything up. The whole reason we lost to this other faction is because that girl came there. Let's go track her down and kill her. And the vengeance cycle continues. The themes, it, it, it just falls apart in the end because of the whole gameplay factor. And obviously, you know, because, you know, there's some parts you can't control. You have to torture someone 
And the fact that she's actually emotionally affected by torturing someone. You've killed so many people before this. Like I said, you could explode someone. You could shoot people in their legs. They can beg. Bam, you can pop them. It's just that felt so weird to say. But that's what you can do. And it's like then torturing someone, physically beating them. You can physically beat someone while playing the game. So it doesn't really work that she's emotionally traumatized by torturing the Firefly at the hospital or whatever. And while speaking about Ellie and like the, mentioning the Firefly, Ellie's reveal of that she knows what happens uh, happened at the hospital, St. Mary's Hospital, to the Fireflies and everything, it was done in a short flashback and that was one of the big answer questions of the games which was answered. Like she already knows, for the whole game she already knows it and when we find out that she already knew it, kind of already knew that she knew it because the moment the Firefly at the hospital said he's done so much worse, I'm like okay Ellie knows, it makes sense. Um, and Ellie knows, and it's kind of take away, takes away a huge impact because there could have been so much to explore gameplay wise and just story wise with that one idea. They just do it in the short flashback and it just it loses a lot of impact to just knowing it's there and knowing that Ellie's already known because it could have been even so much more impactful if she found out during the actual vengeance hunt itself. She says in her journal that she doesn't really understand it, she's confused by it and everything. Obviously she hasn't forgiven Joel entirely yet. Carrying over, talking about all this uh, gameplay and everything, there were way too many moments where it just feels silent and dragged on the game itself. This is like the days, obviously you repeat days as different characters, but a lot of Abby's parts are dragged on. I feel like no one can say otherwise. And then a lot of moments when you're just playing as Abby or Ellie and you're just the one character there, and when it's just silent, like the music for the most part, like when I listen to the soundtrack on Spotify, Gustavo does a great job with some of the music, but then the, a lot of the tracks are just this like atmospheric tense music and that's pretty much all I can really remember from the game itself and because that music plays when you're in a fight but then when you're just standing around it, I feel like there was rarely any moments where there was just like, this nice peaceful music it was really just silence and like maybe short rain or something but yeah, they had it had a few moments where there were music and I was like oh great music track like when Abby and Liv are on the boat going to um where are they going? No, not Abby and Lev. Is it Abby and Lev? Yeah, Abby and Lev. Yeah, we're on the boats, uh, like the opening scene, obviously. It felt too silent, especially when you have characters there, there's that conversation you can have. And there, there are moments like that, which are really great. Speaking as Abby, at one point she says that Yara and Lev saved her. That's why she's protecting them both. Uh, it's like, uh, Joel saved you just before he, like, you tortured him and everything. So that obviously doesn't hold up much weight. And the fact that Tommy also saved you, and like, sure, they didn't kill Tommy and Ellie, which is really stupid. They're like, we're no better than he is if we kill them. I'm pretty sure, I think there are like seven people there. Six out of the seven people there don't give a shit about who dies. They're literally at war with the Seraphites, so I don't think they would give a shit if two other people die. Especially when one of them says they're gonna kill them and then do everything they can against them. And I also don't get how they didn't realize that was the person who was immune. You know, they surely knew who she was because um, they were at St. Mary's Hospital when it happened. Like, they knew who Joel was uh, by his name. Um, they could have easily tortured her and found out the immune court. Like, it's just like, I feel like the Fireflies gave up too easily. And I think that's the things that like I said earlier. You have this huge story you can explore, like when Ellie finds out the whole Firefly thing, they're just kind of gone. The only time which I actually did feel sorry for Abby was actually when she was on the pillars and that's mainly because you can see the physical changes between Abby back when she was before this and she was really happy, happy I guess in the last scene we saw her and she was somewhat happy um, and then you, her at the pillar she's completely different and then that's but that's also mostly because I'm just thinking damn what a way to be tortured it's it's yeah just le left out there and everything she still managed to fight Ellie and lose, but I feel like the only reason they had this whole scene as well was because they knew that they couldn't have Ellie win or couldn't have the outcome they wanted at the theater because, you know, Abby was too strong and Abby would always win. There was no real tension there, no way of thinking Ellie could win because look at Abby. In a physical fight, Abby's gonna win. The Rattlers and everything, it just felt slapped on, it was right there. Um, I was also a little confused at first, uh, like the Fireflies, were they real or were those the Rattlers who intercepted it because they just happened to be outside when Abby came out. I wasn't 100% sure, but then the ending home screen is the Firefly base, so the Fireflies are real out there. Um, and Abby's made it. 
Which is another thing, it's like, Abby's made a wise up home screen about Abby. Do you really think we care so much more about Abby than Ellie? That, like, even make the home screen about her? It's... The game invests way too much into Abby, and it's so misplaced. They're doing so much work to make both of them good, at the same time bad, that it just, it just makes me... It makes me angry, but at the same time makes me not care. It's it's so confusing. I really don't care about Abby. For all I care, she can just go die. Like, I'm gonna watch forever. I'm gonna watch an Abby death compilation. The fact that people do that, it's great. I, I died as Abby a few times. I didn't give a shit. I wanted Ellie to kill her and everything. With Ellie, she's also done some pretty bad stuff. But at least I put way more hours into Ellie's story than Abby's. I'm more invested there. So even if they're both a little grey, as the game tries to put it, Ellie, yeah, I, I'm rather rueful. Yeah, speaking about the actual ending of the game, there were three points when I thought the game actually ended. So it was um, at the theatre, I thought, oh, the game's gonna end there. Disappointing, but it seems like the game's gonna end there. And then no, there's the farm scene, I'm like, okay, cool, an epilogue. And then when I was sitting on the tractor with JJ and I was looking out at the sunset, I was thinking, ah, oh, the game's gonna end here on this beautiful shot. No, the game continues. I thought the game was gonna end on the pillar shot and it just ended there, but no, and then there's a short epilogue, but yeah. It's, it's just like, ah, oh, you know, nothing, ah, oh, there's this, ah, oh, it's like, here's, an, here's a climax, oh no wait, there's still some more. A somewhat of a climax, ah, oh, still some more. Speaking of other stuff as well, we have Tommy character-wise, he goes from, you know, obviously being, he doesn't even see Joel die, he's knocked out for the whole thing. Ellie actually sees it, uh, but anyway, he goes from telling Ellie, no, don't go, don't do this, uh, you know, you're one person, they have an army, you can't do it. And then the next day he actually leaves, he goes to do it himself. And then, but then once he gets, one, once they all meet up and everything and, you know, he's seen what everyone's gone through and he's done some killing himself, they're like, you know, leave Abby, we gotta just let her go, let's go back to um, Jackson. I haven't seen him go through a journey, but I can understand, you know, seeing Dina pregnant, Jesse here, Ellie going, like, being traumatized in that moment she killed the pregnant lady. You know, you can kind of come to some realization, I can imagine. But then... Once they get tortured, he gets shot in the eye and he doesn't die. I don't get how Dina, Ellie, and him actually made it back to Jackson. Did they bring Jesse's dead body as well? I don't know. It's just like, he got shot in the eye. I was like, oh, Tommy's dead. No, he's alive. And he's alive and he's angrier than ever. His relationship with Maria is gone. He wants vengeance and he said, Ellie promised me vengeance and everything like that. It's, it's 2360s. Oh, he, do, he says, don't go fight. He goes and fights. He says, let's go back. But then he wants vengeance again. And it, it's too much. And I can't imagine, did Ellie come back? People theorize that Ellie came back, went to Jackson, then went back to the farmhouse. But she went back to Jackson, did she tell Tommy that she let her go? Is Tommy forever angry at Ellie or did he? Did she lie? Um, is she actually back with Dina? Like that's what the game tries to imply, that she's back with Dina, like the wristband and that they were gonna say, like have the little toy and everything. She's letting go of Joel by playing the guitar with two missing fingers, it's stupid. I'll get, I'll get onto that later. Then she goes back into uh, moving on from Joel and everything, but like, Dina already said she was gonna leave her and that they're done and that kind of stuff, like, don't go. So Ellie still goes, they can't easily just get back together like that. Surely it's been months and Dina's probably moved on, she has a child and everything. Um, would Tommy still be angry? All that kind of stuff. All these questions, they kind of just leave ambiguous, which, you know, can work. It worked in the first game, but here it's just, it feels messy and poorly done. The last thing I have on my notes that I actually want to talk about is the... Um, ending of the game itself, how everything accumulates. They play 15 hours, at least I did. 15 hours is Ellie roughly, 15 hours is Abby roughly. And it's like a huge break in the middle. It completely ruins the game. Um, the ideas presented can be great if they were better done. I've got no problem with a lot of the uh, characters being women. I feel like Abby's body is obviously exaggerated. Um, a bit too much in my opinion. I found Yara and Liv, while they seemed interesting, at first I was like, oh, here they are, and then I was like, okay, I guess they're gone. But then, then they start to have an effect on Abby, um, but it just felt too messy. Because Yara was like, oh, like you have that time with Lev. I never heard anyone call him Lily. So when that came up, I was like, I didn't hear anyone say that. Maybe maybe I missed it, because like I said, I was just playing it just to get it over and done with. When I came up, I was like, huh, okay. And then there's this huge story of like um, being trans and everything. I don't remember what made him run away from the religion and we were, were looking for a reason for that. So that was one thing kind of happening in the background. To me, Lev is kind of the heart of the story in the way that Ellie was in the first game. That Lev 
is the most innocent character out of all these people. And uh, like a religious cult is against it and whatnot. He, Lev kills his mom. Uh, Yara ends up dying trying to save Lev. And then it's like, you could have you could have lost Lev or you could have lost Yara. You could have chosen which one, I guess, technically. But then the idea is like, it's like, it's just so messy. And I feel like this is a great, obviously it's a great thing to have that representation in the game. But then it felt like such a diversion. It felt like an excuse to get Abby out of the aquarium and somewhere else so Ellie could come in and actually kill Owen and Mel. I felt like it didn't add anything else to it, the whole like the mother thing and everything. Um, it just, it just, yeah, it just felt added on there. But then, yeah, it's weird, like that's also a great set piece with the burning village and everything. And they're kind of trying to replicate it later with the Rattlers where you have this burning building as well. I'm like, I've seen it before in a better way just earlier with the island and the Seraphites and everything. On to the ending of the game, it's, it's unsatisfying. Um, it being deep and all this kind of stuff, it's, it's not true. You can rip this game apart. I've done some here. There are probably a lot more videos which I've done it better. I've spent like the last few days staying up to like 12, 1 a.m. listening to these videos because I'm just trying to think through the, through this game and everything. And not in a good way. <laughs> but I've listened to both positive and negative things about the game. And overall, it's just this game is fine. Because even in the gameplay wise, it's just like you can't like you can't play as Abby and then expect me to care about Joel's death when I'm the person caring for it. It makes me feel it doesn't you try you, you treat it like a real oh this is he's a bad guy he killed the doctor and the doctor who's also changed um, in appearance I'll say between the first and second game and no one's really saying too many things about but I talk too much about politics and all these kind of ideas and everything let's move on you know it creates this whole mixture of feelings and it's not satisfying. You know, there's this open world part of the game which is so out of place. It was kind of nice to kind of roam around and do it, but I preferred the linear storyline. And after that, there's nothing else like that. And it was just back to a linear storyline. Jesse comes out of nowhere. I don't know how he made it there. You have the you have the codes to get through the gates. Tommy doesn't, and Jesse doesn't. But Tommy somehow is ahead of you. Yet the power generators are all back in their original position, and he also doesn't have the codes. Jesse somehow gets there, but they all came from the same place. I can understand if they came from different places, there are different entrances. All three of them came from the same place, but they like they somehow all get inside in their own. Like Jesse ends up in a whole different area. It's it's like in Pittsburgh, you see these other tourist tourists there in the actual town, but then they could have come from anywhere. So I can believe they came from another entrance of the town or something. So I can believe that. But here they're the same, coming from the same place. I assume they would all take the same path. Trailers also mislead you of Joel being alive. I said that in my vlog itself. Um, oh, I've seen trailer shots of Joel as an old guy and everything. He's still alive. No, he's not. It's Jesse who's the one who grabs Ellie by the mouth and everything. And misleading can work. It worked in Avengers Endgame and Infinity War and that kind of stuff. It can work if what else we get is satisfying to an extent. This wasn't. <laughs> So anyway, going back to the ending of the game, I want to try to wrap this up because this is probably a very long video, but it's a video I want to make. Ellie loses her fingers so she can't play guitar. She doesn't get vengeance against a character which I imagine at least more than half of the player base would not actually like Abby. Abby's apparently the same age as Ellie, that's what Neil Druckmann said or one of, the, one of them said. She definitely doesn't look it and it's also weird seeing her as a kid, it's just yeah. I don't care about her relationship with her dad or Lev or anything like that. Um, so then when she goes off with Lev, like I said, the home screen is about Abby. I don't care. You know, she goes off. I wanted vengeance. I get nothing out of it because Ellie's not in a relationship anymore. I don't know where she's going. She could possibly be going back to Jackson. Sure, it's implied that Neil Druckmann said they had the little toy. She's going back to Dina. But Dina already and her already ended. It's going to take a long time for them to heal because Dina could have moved on. You know, Jesse's always, it's been months, you know, things obviously have changed and it's not looking optimistic or bright or it doesn't look like there's hope in a sense for the future. So how am I meant to be leaving this game satisfied? And even if it's like dark and gloomy, I can still be satisfied with, wow, okay, this was very interesting. It was very, made me think and all this kind of stuff. It didn't because Ellie has nothing. The game that, the player that I've played most of this game as, the player that I went into this game rooting for, has nothing by the end of it. No relationships, no, can't play the guitar, letting go of Joel. So like the one thing she had left of Joel, which could have been a positive thing, she can't even do is, 
she leaves a whole blood trail and there could possibly be people coming back for vengeance in the future. Um, Jackson City could actually be attacked because, you know, the Seraphites and the wolves, they're, 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 they're terrible people in their own right. And, and it, like seeing how Jackson just lets anyone in, according to Tommy and stuff, God knows what can happen. And it, it's, it's unsatisfying. Just, it's just... Hey everyone, Kirtan here from the future. Just a few things I actually missed in the original review I recorded. So enjoy my voice over these overlays and I'm just going to cover a quick few things and thoughts I had about the game itself. So I talked about the gameplay a little, but the gameplay I like. I liked it in the first one. It's nothing breathtaking and amazing, but it's good because it serves the story and that's the main thing. It's, it's enjoyable enough that you can enjoy it. Uh, one thing I just didn't like in this game itself, listen mode was nerfed and I didn't really enjoy it. It made stealthing, especially towards the beginning of the game, much harder. Um, having enemies call out each other's names was real nice. Um, and as, as a lot of people have pointed out, they need to be more skins though. The graphics were obviously amazing. And it was so cool to see the environments, the gameplay and everything worked really well. With, with the gameplay as well, it's Ellie keeps on saying that there's so much stock in the st Seattle itself, which is so weird to see. And I noticed that as well when I was playing on the normal difficulty. I heard it's obviously harder on the harder difficulties, but the normal should be the average for what it is. But I felt like there was too much stock in it in general. Talking about the gameplay, the new infected, the... Sh I can't remember what they started. Sh shamblers, I think they were. They were really bad. They were just like a lesser, weaker version of the bloaters. And it doesn't really make sense why they just came about. It's not evolution if you go back a stage, I think. It's just... It would be fine if the bloaters were new in this game, like how there was the Rat King and everything. It works in that sense, but the shamblers don't. The Sorkers being much more improved and much more um, defined, uh, defined in what they are was really cool to see. One thing I forgot to mention about Mel is that she is very pregnant and somehow manages to make the same trek to the aquarium as Abby did in Seattle Day 1. How? Um, the skyscraper climb would be my favorite set piece because of the vertigo Abby gets and it just looks really cool. It's a little confusing as to how they made it, but it looks pretty cool. But overall, my favorite moment would be the museum flashback because you get some fun dialogue of Ellie, you get some parts of Joel. It's just really nice. Um, but I overall, I, I also really miss Factions. That Factions multiplayer was really cool and I played that a lot. The other thing I wanted to talk about briefly was Joel again. Um, his decision at the end of the first game, I agreed with him. Yes, it's kind of leaning, oh, is it good or bad what he chose? What did he do? But in the end, the um, if, even if the Fireflies discovered a form of um, immunity to give to people, how would they administer it? Would they be they'd be in control of it? Would everyone get it? It opens a whole other can of worms, which is just it causes more harm than good. In the first game, a recording even mentions that there were other immune people and that the tests failed and everything by the Fireflies. But in this game, Joel never says that. Ellie has never told Joel's side like how he felt and how the Fireflies never gave her a choice either. And the Take On Me section where Ellie sang that was really nice, um, but I thought the song would have been um, Ellie's first song she learned, maybe that's why she was playing it on the guitar, being about Joel, uh, not Joel, uh, Ellie and Dina, which was nice, adds a layer to them. Overall, I still think it was a very beautiful part there. Finally, the journal in this game was a really small nice touch. It was a little annoying how Ellie wrote something, then put it back in a bag, then have to take it out again, but otherwise it was really cool. And it's important to note that many staff from the first game had left Naughty Dog before or during this game's production. So they did a really good job, um, but it's just wondering what the story could have been if you had the people from the original product here as well. Don't get me wrong, there are far worse games out there. I'm glad I didn't buy the early edition like I was initially going to when the game was releasing in February, but the writing and execution of this game just lets, lets it down. It's, it makes playing it a little difficult. So now I'll quickly go back to the old me closing out the actual video itself. I'm gonna I'm gonna end this video on just quickly I'm gonna show clips of how I was reacting to the credits and when I was like just ending the game and everything. Um, but yeah, just I pretty much walked off the part <laughs> when I ended the last one. Anyway, um, the game's fine. Um, yeah, so if you have enjoyed this video, before we go to that clip, make sure you hit that like button. Leave a comment down below on what you thought about the game. Did you play it? Did you just watch a gameplay of it? Did you hear the leaks? I didn't. So I'd like to know what people thought, what you all thought. Anyway, uh, make sure you subscribe as well. Hit that like button, leave a comment. Until next time, I'll see us. Quickly recording this on my phone because this is my straight reaction to just finishing The Last of Us Part 2. 
So the game credits are playing right there. Yeah, it wasn't a great sequel at all. It's, uh... It's so sad, and oh, if it's like, oh, it's a realistic, really real and everything, no, it's, it's just... There was no need to do all this. The ending wasn't climactic at all. Um, the it wasn't emotional. I just sat here, like literally just sat here. That's how I looked as the naughty dog thing appeared and it all ended. Um, hopefully I didn't cover the mic when I said that, because um, I'm not really emotional right now, which is so weird. Now I'm trying to emote more so you can actually hear me, but very disappointing. Um, you know, I just don't know why this was made the way it was. It wasn't a climactic ending, it wasn't emotional, it felt like all these characters died and just just for the sake of just making another game. It was very convoluted and you know, I could understand, I followed what was going on, but it just didn't work in the game's favour. So yeah, um, I'll do more when I actually review this game and it's, it's not going to be very positive, sadly.